I missed you guys. So I really wanted to make a high yield video for you to help those of you who are taking your exams soon. This is so high yield for USMLE and Comlex. D exam writers love to ask you HLA disease associations because they're so random, right? It's just like this random assortment of letters and you're expected to know what disease is associated with them. It's just, it's remarkable how often this is showing up. So the way that I think we should approach this is we're gonna build this chart. We're gonna build this table. And on the left-hand column, I'll list the HLA uh, gene, right? So like HLA, A3, D4, blah, blah, blah. In the middle, I'm going to put the diseases that are associated with it. And then on the far right column, I'll give you my awesome mnemonic. And most of these are going to be visual mnemonics. You have to think of like a picture, uh, but they're going to make perfect sense. And it's, they're going to be awesome. You're going to get tons of free points from this video. I promise. So let's jump right in. Our first HLA subtype is A3. So HLA, A3. And the disease that's associated with HLA, A3 is hemochromatosis. So if you've been paying attention at all, you know that hemochromatosis is uh, is due to iron overload, right? It's iron overload. So I, I associate this with iron. So what I want you to think is about the Audi A3, right? Because this is HLA A3. So let's think about the Audi A3. And look at this beautiful specimen of a car. This is the iron colored version of the Audi A3. So think about the iron colored Audi A3, which will tell you that we're talking about HLA A3. And we're talking about hemochromatosis because this is iron colored. And of course, hemochromatosis is due to iron overload. So super simple. You just got a free point. HLA A3, you're going to be taking your test. You're going to be like, okay, they're asking me about HLA A3. Well, how do I remember what this is associated with? Well, A3, I'm thinking of the Audi A3, one of the sexiest cars alive. And, hmm, oh, it was in the gray color. It was in the iron color in Dirty USMLE's video. So it's hemochromatosis. Bam, free point. Love you guys. Let's keep going. HLA B8 is associated with myasthenia gravis, um, Addison's disease, and Graves' disease. So, I want you to think about MAG, M-A-G, M from myasthenia, A from Addison, and G from Graves. So MAG, and specifically, I want you to think of magazine. Now, how the hell are we relating magazine to B8? Well, I got you. Did you ever see the movie Austin Powers? If you haven't, this mnemonic won't make sense, and you should go watch the video, because, like, why were you deprived of a childhood? It's one of the funniest movies of all time. But Austin Powers had this saying where he would go, Oh, behave. So here's an Austin Powers magazine where on the cover he's saying, oh, behave. And instead of saying, oh, behave, I want you to say, oh, B8. B8 for HLA B8. Austin Powers will tell you, oh, B8. And magazine, mag, M-A-G for myasthenia, Addison, and Graves. Okay, so we've already done two. You're going to know these really well, right? Oh, B8. Oh, B8 on the magazine, M-A-G, myasthenia, Addison, Graves, B8. Easy. Audi A3 in the iron color, hemochromatosis, easy. You've already got two free points. You already know like a quarter of the chart. Let's keep cruising. HLA B27. So this is the most well-known one, right? Everybody knows HLA B27. It causes uh, psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, uh, inflammatory bowel disease associated arthritis, and reactive arthritis. And this one's pretty simple. So we're going to take the first letters of all these diseases. So P from psoriasis, A from ankylosing spondylitis, I from IBD associated arthritis and R from reactive arthritis, which spells out the word pair. And there's a pair of wings on the B-27 bomber, which was a, an aircraft that was around for quite some time. So I want you to think about the pair of wings on the B-27 bomber. That'll tell you HLA B-27 and then pair will tell you about these four diseases that this is really um, associated with. Very, very, very high yield. So you know three of the HLAs already. And I know what you guys are thinking. Damn, dirty. These mnemonics are awesome. I know. You're welcome. Let's keep going. HLA DQ2 and HLA DQ8 associated with celiac disease. Okay. So there's some mnemonics out there that I've seen in first aid and I, I really don't like it. It has something to do with Dairy Queen. And then I'm like, how does Dairy Queen mean celiac and the two and the eight? And I just, no, that doesn't work for me. So what my mnemonic is, is celiac reminds me of Celine Dion, right? Celine Dion for celiac. And Interesting little tidbit about Celine Dion is she actually burst onto the scene in 1982. She won some like singing competition. I think it was in Sweden or something. And that was when she burst onto the scene. So my mnemonic is that Celine Dion was declared queen in 1982. And the eight and the two in 1982 tell me about DQ8 and DQ2 and declared queen for DQ, right? So I know it's a little bit of a stretch this one, but I just don't really like the other mnemonics that I've seen out there. So for celiac, think Celine Dion declared queen for DQ in 1982 for DQ8 and DQ2. Um, 
I mean, who doesn't love Celine Dion, right? My heart will go on. Titanic. This shit's legendary. All right, next one. HLA-DR2. Associated with hay fever, multiple sclerosis, lupus, and good pasture syndrome. Okay, so this one's tricky, right? Four diseases that are not the easiest to remember, and you got to associate them with DR2. So in order to really get this one down, I need to set a scene for you. And what I want you to imagine are two doctors. Two doctors out on the pasture. So these are two doctors, or we're going to pretend that they are at least. I just Googled, I literally Googled two people on grass, and this is what I found. So we're going to pretend that these are two doctors. And two doctors is going to remind us of DR2, right? Doctor two, two doctors. And they're out on the grass and all of a sudden they see a wolf pack coming and they're like, damn. They go, hey, there are multiple wolves on the pasture. What does that mean? Hay for hay fever, multiple for multiple sclerosis, wolves for lupus. Lupus uh, is associated with the word wolf. Good to know. And pasture for good pasture, right? How awesome is that mnemonic, guys? Two doctors out on the pasture and they're like, hey, there are multiple wolves on the pasture, right? They're scared. Wolf pack is coming. What do I do? Run or take out your phone and show the guy taking the picture of your phone. Whatever. Two doctors for DR2. Hey, there are multiple wolves on the pasture for hay fever, multiple for multiple sclerosis, wolves for lupus, and pasture for good pasture syndrome. Interesting little tidbit. Lupus um, has to do with the word wolf because back in the day, people used to think that the, the face appearance of lupus looked like a wolf. So yeah, a little bit of history for you. But that's HLA DR2, right? Two doctors saying, hey, there's multiple wolves on the pasture. That's a, an amazing mnemonic. I dare you to find a better mnemonic for HLA DR2 than that dirty USMLE mnemonic right there. HLA DR3, so I want to skip this one. Um, there's a lot of overlapping diseases here, like, like uh, Hashimoto gets thrown in here, and Addison gets thrown in here, and type 1 diabetes, but because it overlaps with other higher yield HLA subtypes, if an exam writer really wants to go after it, they're probably going to ask you one of the ones that are like more indisputable or more highly associated with that disease. So I just don't think that HLA DR3 is worth committing to memory. So if you want to be super nerdy and you're going for that 300 on step one, then sure, go learn this, but do that on your own time because this is about saving you time and getting you free points. So we're just going to blow right past HLA DR3. I don't think it's worth memorizing. Instead, we're going to go right to HLA DR4. And HLA DR4 is associated with rheumatoid arthritis, right? RA rheumatoid arthritis, and type 1 diabetes. So the mnemonic here is that there are four walls in one room. And what does this tell you? We're four for DR4, one for DM1, so type 1 diabetes, right? One for type 1 diabetes, and room for rheumatoid arthritis. But in this case, we're using it like the room, you know, where you live. So there are four walls in one room, four for DR4, one for type 1 diabetes, and room for rheumatoid arthritis. So this one is not a visual mnemonic. This is just like a one-liner, really quick and dirty, but it works. And let's finish up with our last HLA subtype, HLA-DR5. HLA-DR5 associated with Hashimoto thyroiditis. Now, let me pause for a second. Some people will tell you that HLA-DR3 is also associated with Hashimoto, and they're, they're technically right, but it's not as highly associated. So if you're going to learn one and you're going to stick one in your brain, then learn uh, DR5, right? The mnemonic here, instead of saying Hashimoto thyroiditis, I want you to say Hashimoto fibroiditis. Five rhymes with thigh, so Hashimoto fibroiditis will tell you that Hashimoto is associated with DR5. And if you really want to be nerdy, then instead of hash e moto, no hash three moto. So hash three moto five roiditis will also remind you that there is a minor association with hash e moto, hash three moto, hashimoto with dr three as well. But no dr five, so no five roiditis. And if you must, no hash three moto five roiditis. So guys, that's it. I know this was fast, but this is some real annoying stuff to learn. So I wanted to hit this as like a rapid review. These mnemonics are money, right? I've used these. I took my exams with this. This works. So if, you, if you're struggling and you can't learn these any other way, I got your back.